Hey, this is Presh Talwalkar. A horse is tied to an outside corner of a 20 foot by 10 foot rectangular barn. What is the maximum area the horse can graze outside the barn if the rope has length L? Solve for the cases of L equals 5 feet and L equals 25 feet. You should find the exact answer. If you are up for a challenge, solve for the case of L equals 50 feet. You can solve for the answer to three decimal places. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. We'll get started with the case of L equals 5 feet. The horse can graze all distances that are 5 feet from the corner of the barn. If you sketch out the shape, this turns out to be 3 quarters of a circle with the radius of 5. So the maximum area that the horse can graze will be 3 quarters of a circle with the radius of 5. The area of a circle is pi r squared, and if we substitute in r equals 5, we get the area is equal to 75 pi divided by 4 which is approximately 58.905 feet squared. Now let's tackle the next case of L equals 25 feet. The problem starts out similarly where the horse can graze a three quarter circle where the radius is equal to the length of the rope. But in this case, there is a difference. The horse actually has leftover rope after walking along one side of the barn. So when the horse is going along the side of the barn that has 10 feet, there's actually 15 feet of rope left over. So the horse can graze another quarter circle around this wall of the barn. Similarly, for the barn which has a 20 foot wall, there will be five feet of rope left over. So the horse can graze another quarter circle of five feet around this corner of the barn. The maximum area that the horse can graze will be the sum of these three different shapes. The area will equal to be the area of three quarters of a circle with the radius of 25, one quarter of an area of a circle with radius 15, and one quarter of a circle with a radius of five. We can use the formula for the area of a circle and find out that this simplifies to be 2125 pi divided by four, which is approximately 1668.971 feet squared. So now let's tackle the more challenging case of L equals 50 feet. The problem starts out just like the case of L equals 25, where we have a three quarter circle and there will be leftover rope for each side of the barn. But now let's look at the length that's left over around each of the walls of the barn. So for the wall, which has 10 feet, there will be 40 feet of rope left over. So the horse can graze 40 feet around this wall and there will still be leftover rope, but it will actually be covered in another case, which I'm going to show you. So for the wall, which has 20 feet, there will be 30 feet of rope left over. And now the horse can graze a quarter circle around this with the radius of 30. So this is why I didn't draw out the rest of that 40 foot radius. It's because it's actually going to overlap with an, the other quarter circle with the radius of 30. And now we end up with a very sort of difficult shape because the area that the horse can graze is not simply the sum of circles and quarter circles we end up with a part of the grazing area that will overlap. So in order to find the total area, we're going to have to account for this portion that overlaps. I'm going to show you two different ways to solve this problem. One way will be to approach it using calculus. We're going to directly solve for the area of the overlap. The other way, we're going to use trigonometry and we're going to solve for the rest of this area by cutting it up into different shapes where there's no overlap. So let's start out first by considering the overlap directly. 
We could consider the area by adding up the areas of these quarter circles and three quarter circles, and then subtracting out this little area that overlaps. So in order to do that, I'm going to magnify these quarter circles and look at this region which overlaps. So in order to use calculus, we're going to put a coordinate system. I'll put the origin right where the barn intersects the uh, circle with the radius of 40. So the circle with the radius of 40 has an equation of x squared plus y squared equals 40. Its center is at the origin and it has a radius of 40. We can solve this equation for y. We get the square root of 1600 minus x squared. The other circle with the radius of 30, this has a center that's 20 feet to the right and 10 feet down. So the equation of this circle will be x minus 20 squared plus y plus 10 squared equals 30 squared. We can solve this for y to figure out the equation of this circle. So in order to solve for the area of the overlapping region, we're going to need to know where these two circles intersect. We can figure that out by setting the two equations for these two circles equal to each other. We can then solve this equation to get that x is equal to 24 plus 4 times the square root of 11. So now we're going to calculate directly the area of this overlapping region. So we'll focus just on this overlapping region. It begins at the value of x equals 20. The first portion where we go up to x equals 24 plus 4 square root of 11, this will correspond to the circle with the radius of 30. So we know the equation for the circle, and so that's going to be the y value up to this limit. We then will want to consider the rest of this region, where we go up to x equals 40. The boundary of the shape here will correspond to the boundary of the circle with the radius of 40. So for the remainder, we're going to have y equals the square root of 1600 minus x squared. So we've now figured out all the key details so that we can set up two integrals which directly calculate the area. We have the area of the overlapping region being the different limits that we've calculated and the different functions which we've calculated. So you can put this in a numerical solver and we'll get that this is approximately 341.7794 square feet. So we figured out the hard part of this problem. We can now go back to our original diagram. We can calculate that the, the area that the horse can graze as the area of these different three quarter circles and quarter circles minus the area of the overlapping region. We've just calculated the area of the overlapping region and then we go ahead and substitute in our values for the area of these quarter circles and three quarter circles and we end up with an answer that the area that the horse can graze is approximately 7512.202 square feet. So this is the approach to solve this problem using calculus. I'm now going to show you a different approach which uses trigonometry. It'll be quite involved, but I'm going to show you that it's actually possible to do it without calculus. So let's go through those steps will focus on the region that overlaps. So instead of worrying about this region which overlaps, we're actually going to dissect this region into different shapes that don't overlap. The trick is to connect the corners of the barn to the point at which these two circles intersect. We end up forming a kite-shaped quadrilateral. Now the region above this kite-shaped quadrilateral is the sector of a circle. The region below this quadrilateral is also the sector of a circle. So we can actually get rid of these quarter circles that we've drawn and we can see that we can calculate this entire region by calculating the area of three different non-overlapping, non-intersecting shapes. 
or sorry, they are intersecting shape, but they're not overlapping. So now it remains to calculate the area of these three different shapes. So we'll start out with the area of this quadrilateral. The trick is we're going to connect the diagonal of the rectangular barn. This will form a triangle. So we've connected a triangle to the quadrilateral to create a bigger triangle. So we can calculate the area of the quadrilateral by taking the area of a larger rectangle and then subtracting the area of a right triangle. So we'll start by calculating that the diagonal of the rectangular barn is equal to 10 square root of 5. We can calculate this because we know the two legs of this right triangle and then we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the diagonal. So we'll input that as one of the values to this triangular shape. We know the other lengths because they're equal to the radiuses of these two different circles. We can also put in the values for the legs of this right triangle. So we now have a triangle where we know three of its sides and we can calculate its area using Heron's formula. The value of S here is equal to the semi-perimeter, it's one half the perimeter of this triangle. So we can substitute in the values for these known legs, lengths of the triangle and we end up with the area of this triangle is equal to 100 times the square root of 11. We then have the right triangle. We can calculate its area as one half times its, of its base times its height. So this is equal to 100. So we figured out the area of this quadrilateral is equal to 100 square root of 11 minus 100. It now remains to calculate the area of these circular sectors. And in order to do that, we need to know what the central angle of each of these sectors is. So we'll go ahead and start calculating some angles. We'll start out with the rectangular barn and we'll consider the right triangle. We'll consider the lower right triangle. So we can calculate this angle over here because we know in a right triangle we've got the legs calculated as 10 and 20 and we know the hypotenuse is 10 square root of 5. So we can use trigonometry to figure out this angle and we can use trigonometry to figure out this other angle. We have the inverse cosine of square root of 5 over 5 and the other angle is the inverse cosine of 2 square root of 5 divided by 5. We now need to calculate the angles in the large rectangle which consists of the quadrilateral plus one half of the rectangular barn. So how can we do that? Well recall from before that we've calculated the three lengths of the different sides. If you know the lengths of three sides of a triangle, you can calculate the angles of the, each of the triangle of the angles in the triangle by using the law of cosines. So using this formula and using the known lengths of these sides, we can then calculate the two different angles that we need in this calculation. So these will also be the inverse cosine of something complicated. So why do we do this? It's so that now we can calculate the angles of these circular sectors. So we can calculate the angle of the, of the circular sector where the radius is 40 as equaling 180 degrees, which is pi radians, minus the inverse cosine where we get rid of the angle from the big triangle and then minus the other angle from the right triangle of the barn. So we've taken the entire 180 degrees and we subtracted out the other angles. So that leaves us with the angle of this circular sector that we need to know. We can do the same thing for the circular sector where the radius is 30. We take the pi radians, which is a straight line, and we subtract out the angles of the two triangles, which are not part of the circular sector. So we end up with a complicated expression, but we can do this. So now we just need to use the formula for the circular, the area of a circular sector. This will equal to the radius squared times the central angle divided by two. We know the radius of each of these sectors and we've just figured out the angles. So we can go ahead and substitute in the values that we have. We'll get approximate answers and we can put this all together that we figured out the area that we're, we want to know, these three shapes, all together is approximately 1621.716.
So now we go back to the problem that we don't know, the area that the horse can graze. So this will be the three quarter circles with the radius of 50 plus the rest of the area that we just calculated. So we put that all in and we again get to the answer of approximately 7512.202 square feet, which is exactly the same answer as the calculus method. Although it took a little more involved calculations, we could figure it out without calculus. Did you figure out this problem? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math and game theory. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions, which you can follow on Facebook, Google Plus, and Patreon. You can catch me on social media at Presh Talwalker. And if you like this video, please check out my books. There are links in the video description.